it's okay you can get them uh hello everyone and welcome to drawing bigfoot hope everybody's doing all right out there tonight uh we've got a great encounter tonight to share with you uh i guess he's just getting his earphones that's okay um and with us of course is our artist larry batson how are you doing larry like i said the other night i'm as happy as a red slider at a fish farm that sounds good yeah. that sounds good um <laughs> our guest uh is just getting his headphones uh welcome <laughs> like <the> heroes <laughs> hello daniela and larry welcome uh, uh, Rick, well, Richard Taylor, aren't you? We're calling you Rick tonight. You're all right with Rick, are you, I guess? Oh, yeah. Richard's my business side, but people that know me, I'm Rick, you know. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for coming on tonight and um, sharing your encounter and description for Larry to draw. Um, I mean, you, there's a lot to you because I know you've wrote a book and we'll get into that. Uh, you're an investigator, um, not just of Sasquatch, uh, but, but You've, you've had several encounters and it's all very interesting in your background and we're going to all get into that of course and um, <clears throat> sorry i'm losing my voice tonight um but let's um let's start with this one that larry's going to draw and then like i say later on we can all get into the details of, of of it all um but where were you and when this happened i was in uh central oklahoma uh east of lake eufaula uh, tech, uh, Oklahoma, uh, on Cherokee tribal land. Uh, I'm Scots, Irish, Dutch, and German, very proud of that bloodline. But my grandmother was full blood Cherokee Indian. My grandfather was mixed blood. I'm equally proud of that bloodline too. I, I can't be anybody but me, you know, and, uh, I was there, uh, on the land, uh, with the intentions of getting a good, I was in, I was in the mindset of finding proof to convince the unbelievers and the skeptics, but you reach a point where you get frustrated with stupidity and ignorance and, and uh, you know, discourteous people and you just begin to enjoy the ride. But, but I had a hunger then I wanted to get a good night vision video. Uh, they ran me ragged for two nights. Uh, uh, it was a Native American drum making workshop, which I didn't participate in that, but the landowner allowed me to come up and cruise her land. And, and I did the best I could to uh, trick them, bait them, lure them. And that doesn't work. Uh, they're, they're two or three steps ahead of you. You know, they'll they'll play with you. They'll they'll frustrate you. And what's what they did. Uh, I reached a point after a couple of nights, I was by myself and I was sitting on the back of my pickup frustrated. I had heard sounds. I knew they were close, but I never saw anything. And I just said, look, I'm not here to hurt you. I just want to get a good up close look, not not a maybe. I want to see you up close. And, uh, you know, the woods were silent. Uh, the next night was the last, uh, uh, you know, long weekend of the workshop. Uh, I had been around the, the fire with some native uh, ceremonies and customs and then kind of subtly excused myself and went off in the woods. Uh, I made sure I wasn't followed. I'd get into a, a thick line and then I would stop. I would pan and scan. There was just a back of my mind, I thought, somebody might be pranking with me and I wanted to make sure it wasn't. I wasn't up there to waste time and prankers, charlatans, I, I have no use for them. Okay. Well, in the middle of my hiding out in the pitch dark, watching a tree line, uh, the landowner came up on me. I could see her coming closer and I thought she was headed back to the group and she came right up to me and I asked her, I said, uh, called her by name. I said, how did you know I was here? She said, they told me you were here. <laughs> so my mind's thinking that's pretty good. You know, that's real good. You know, still didn't totally uh, accept it. I had my skepticism there. The next thing she said kind of rocked me to the core. She says, do you want to go see them? 
I, it was totally, um, you know, I didn't lead her into that. It was just spontaneous. And it was a, a direct reaction to what I had said in the woods the night before. Now, this freaked me out a little bit. You know, the skeptical mind goes, what are the chances of that? You know, me saying that I knew where she was. She wasn't close to where I was because I was talking to another law enforcement. I'm, I'm My first career was law enforcement, public safety investigator with the fire department. And uh, there was another officer up there with the walkie talk. He was with the landowner. So I knew she couldn't have heard me, you know? So uh, I said, yeah, you know, sure. Uh, we went up, she had 40 acres of clear cut. Uh, there was about a two thirds moon. And as long as you were outside the canopy, you had a pretty good look at, at her and, and things, you know, it was dim light, but you know, with night, your eyes, uh, you know, attuned to the night, that two thirds moon lit everything up. So it was no problem. We went to the, the North end of this 40 acre clear cut. And we were, uh, there was a, a game fence about a, five, five and a half, six foot wood game, uh, uh, livestock fence. And we were leaning against it. And she started calling these subjects out by name, you know? Uh, and I began to hear heavy footfalls coming up out of the creek bottom east of us, uh, heading directly towards us. And my mind was thinking, you know, that sounds pretty big. I mean, I've hunted, you know, most of my life, I know what deer, you know, and heavy games sound like. And it sounded heavy coming up through the thick brush. And, and I'm looking for flashlight, you know, any source of light. But I can tell you this much. Near, near a creek in, in Oklahoma with all the water moccasins and different things, you got to have some pretty good intestinal fortitude to come up through the brush and woods without a, a stitch of light on. Okay. I'm just, I couldn't see any light sources. And then there were more footfalls to the Northeast and there were more footfalls that started up that way from the Southeast th about three different directions. And it sounded like at least a squad, maybe a platoon <laughs> of individuals. And I'm, I'm thinking, you know, if, if a group faked this, which I, I could look over from that north end to the fire and see all the <laughs> attendees, uh, having a dozen people or more, I don't know, uh, out there in the woods pranking uh, was pretty elaborate deal. And whatever was moving towards us sounded very big. And they never broke cover. The, the thick uh, foliage and trees were about 10 feet beyond the, the, the cattle, you know, fence, the, the livestock fence that I was leaning on. And I would say they got to within about 10 feet of the break, sounded very real and very big. Uh, I was pretty nervous. Uh, I asked her, she had told me, do not use a camera, a flashlight or, or your cell phone. They don't like stuff that you put up to your face scopes and, and binoculars and, and, and such. Uh, I was pretty nervous. I asked her, I said, can, can I use my night vision? I was wanting to see what was over there, you know? And uh, she goes, yeah, go ahead. All right. Now this is the first, uh, you, if you, if you do a lot of Bigfoot research, you'll talk about people's, the batteries and their cameras go dead they're, they're, you know, electro electronics are affected. And I've heard it from many sources that have no reason to lie or gain, you know, for saying that, but this brand new night vision scope that I had been using for several days would not come on. Okay. And I fooled with it. I turned it off and on, off and on. I tried it a couple of times and I said, it's, I looked at the landowner and I said, it's not working. And she just kind of nodded her head and then she smiled and she said, try it now. <laughs> Folks, I mean, I take a polygraph test over, you know, this, I don't, I'm not lying. The scope comes on and my mind's freaking out saying, if these people are pranking with me, how did they just do that? I mean, I'm familiar with, you know, uh, magnetic flood lines of flux and electromagnetic, uh, you know, properties in a, in a, a motor windings, you know, and, 
inductive capacitance and, you know, that type of thing. I understand that. I'm thinking, how did they just do that? Well, the scope came on. I couldn't, it's not an x-ray machine. I couldn't see into the foliage. Uh, I, I turned it off. I said, I can't see anything. I put it back in its holster on my belt. And uh, uh, she said, well, do you want to go in there and see them? And uh, Daniela, Larry, I'm going to tell you, I was so apprehensive. If it hadn't been a woman, if it had been a, my testosterone pride would not let me wimp out in front of a woman. Okay. She wasn't afraid. But I was. And if she would have been a man, I'd have probably said, I'm good. <laughs> I'm just being honest with you. I, I was, it sounded very, I don't do vulnerable very well, you know. And to go in there with something big that I've never met before was, was out of my comfort zone. I just don't do vulnerable very well. Well, we went through the gate. We went back down towards the group not to them. We were still a couple hundred yards away and then turned into, I'm going to say the foliage, the brush was mainly probably chest to head high, you know, but her well-worn trail, it, it was her meeting place where she would meet with them and she didn't take too many people there. It wasn't common knowledge and, and it was very restricted, but they had told her to bring me in there. So we went in maybe 100, 150 yards, maybe 200. I wasn't really, I couldn't see. I saw her when we got into the break of the foliage, but when we got under the canopy, it was like pitch dark almost. And she was their friend and I was on her six. I was invading her personal space. I was right on her backside because I didn't want to lose sight of her. And all I'm looking at is the back of her head and following. And there is stuff crunching and moving and swishing on both sides of me. And I was afraid to look, man. Uh, I won't say I was terrified, but I was pretty afraid, you know, and we got back in there, like I said, 100, 150 yards. And then there was a, a trail that ran perpendicular into this main trail. We went over there about 50, 50 or 60 feet off the main trail. And she had a clear cut area of, I want to say maybe 30, 40 feet, you know, where there was no under foliage. There was kind of a break in the canopy and the moonlight came right down and lit that. There were two folding chairs. She had gifting, uh, hanging stuff off of string. So the varmints wouldn't get her food and stuff. They love cornmeal. She left corn, cornmeal in bags. Uh, they would take it, but never all of the cornmeal. They'd always leave a little at the bottom, never empty the thing, which which goes back to a lot of native customs. But anyway, this this is the part I'm guarded about, folks. I I do dis, I do say it in my book, uh, but there are mind speak or mental telepathy uh, people that talk about that uh, with these subjects, and this was my first experience. It hadn't been my last, but Mm -hmm. uh, I, the words, now you got to understand honorably retired law enforcement makes me legal anywhere in the U S or the U S territories to carry protection with me. And if you've carried it as a career, uh, it's a tool. It's, it's not any more dangerous than a hammer. If you use it right, you could, you could take a hammer and put it between somebody's eyes and drop them like a fly. Uh, it's like a car. You know, if you had murder in your heart, you can run people over and kill somebody with the car, you know, with the tool of, of transportation. That's all, you know, uh, those wep weapons are. And mm -hmm. I pretty much, they're like a set of keys to me. I, I've, I've been in real bad situations and never once thought of, of pulling it. You know, I, I mean, that uh, I'll get off that. That's a little rabbit trail. Mm -hmm. So in my head now, with all of these things moving, or she's talking to them, they're moving, and, and I'm, I'm kind of afraid to look, but they're all in the brush around us. In, in my head, very clearly, is why are you carrying a gun? 
And I'm thinking, Rick, you're losing it. You're starting to hear voices in your head, you know? And I kind of didn't believe it was, was very uh, off balance. I mean, it wasn't, it was hard for me to digest the clarity and the intensity increased about tenfold in my head. And it was repeated. Why are you carrying a gun? Now, the second time, there was no doubt in my mind, the difference between the first and the second statement, I mean, I knew then they were talking to me. This was coming from them. And I don't know how I knew how to answer them. I think it's a primal instinct that we have, as humans back where, when we were more tribal had this ability or freely use this ability. I think it's something... Uh, we as humans lost somewhere way back when, but the ability is still there. It's just the the learning how to use it. I know they've done tests with twins and different things that uh, there is non nonverbal communication between individuals, and it's been tested and proven, you know, beyond a reasonable doubt. But anyway, the the second time they asked me in my head. I said, it's a tool of protection that I've carried on my job. I've carried it around my close friends and family. I've never hurt them with it, and I will not hurt you now. That's what I replied, and they answered, and they said, step away from, and they named the landowner in my head. They said, step away from her, you know, using her name. <laughs> And I looked over at her, I said, they're telling me to move away from you. She didn't look shocked. She didn't look upset. She just kind of smiled and said, well, do what they tell you, <laughs> tell you to. Now look, this is her friend, okay? And they're asking me to move away from her. My mind's thinking, I'm fixing to get whacked. <laughs> You know, I mean, that was the first thought that came. They're, they're fixing to attack me. Mm. But it's probably one of the hardest things I've ever done is I turned from her and I started walking back towards the main trail. And I'm hearing movement around me. And again, I don't do vulnerable very well. Uh, I'm a very uh, uh, devout man of faith. I'm not religious. I don't thump a Bible or put put all my belief in front of somebody and say, you need to believe this. No, that's an individual choice. But I do have a very devout relationship with our creator and he's bailed me out of a whole lot of stuff. And uh, I was doing some serious praying right then for protection. And I got back to the main T, T section. I looked the way we had come and I looked the way that was deeper into the woods and when I look deeper in the woods, uh, I don't know if I don't know if any of you have ever watched uh, portions of the Ed Sullivan show. But at the beginning of his show, he would part the curtains and step right out into the spotlight. He would come right into the spotlight, and fifty yards down the trail, and it looked it was orchestrated. A break in the canopy had an area next to a large tree illuminated with the, with the moonbeam. And this 12-foot alpha male, there was no doubt he was a male. I could see his gentilia and, and the way he was built was, was massive. He had to have been no, no shorter than 10 feet, more like about 12 foot. Okay. Wow. He steps out from behind the tree. He's looking right at me. I'm looking at him and, and he's swaying from side, not making any noise, not howling, but he's just swaying side to side like that. And I'm looking at him and the landowner says, There's, you see him, do you see him? He's down the trail there. I said, yeah, he's right there by the tree. Now, I don't know the significance here, folks. Never been explained to that, explained this, but she said, sway with him. Okay. Well, I turn, I face him, and I start matching his side to side sway. 
Okay, I don't still today I don't know the significance other than identifying with I don't know. But the moment I began swaying with him, I heard the crackling, snapping, and just like 45 degrees off of the thick trail. Uh, he wasn't much, I'm six feet. He wasn't, I don't remember looking higher or lower. He was about six feet tall. He came right up out of that brush. I could see him from about mid chest high and he's looking at me and his jaw drops open <laughs> and my jaw drops open and we sit there gawking at each other. Like he's getting a good close look at me and he's probably 15 feet away. I'm, I'm looking at him and as he's looking at me, he's turning back and he's looking at that big alpha male. And right then on the trail where I'm standing, a tree, another one about six feet, my height, uh, definitely female. You know, she had mammary glands. Uh, she's standing there looking at me. And then behind her, about halfway between the alpha male, 50 feet away, another eight foot subject moves out of the foliage. I can, I can't see her real well, but I assume that was mother, the big alpha male. And it dawned on me that the two younger or shorter ones were probably their kids. Mm. And as a parent, I immediately, and a grandparent got two lovely granddaughters. When it sunk in, they were allowing their young to get close to me it was like all my fear and apprehension. I appreciated the fact they trusted me enough to let their young come up and get a close look at me. And it changed from fear to I was giggling, I was laughing, I'm looking. I, I didn't get a stinky smell. Uh, they held their positions. They weren't threatening. They were letting me look at them. And then the unexpected wild card entered the picture. On that trail where the young female was standing, I noticed movement in front of her and I kind of glanced down, but the, the, the vegetation blocked the moonlight, but I could see a little head. I'm going to estimate to be about three foot tall, kind of toddling around in front of that young female. And I'm kind of, now I'm kind of fixed at this young three foot. I realize it's a toddler. And I'm looking and I'm, I finally see its little head turn and it looks back and it looks up at me and it was 15 feet away without ex expecting it. The little thing bolted towards me with both of its arms up, just, just like a little baby does when it runs to its parents. Now folks having these big hairy things close to you is extremely intense but the thought of having a little hairy one latch on to me, hey, my blood pressure went, I mean, my knees almost buckled because number one, I wasn't sure it knew who I was. And number two, if it realized when it got to me, I wasn't what it was expected. And it was to squeal out in, in you know, fear. Big daddy may come down that trail and break me in half. That was that was my biggest fear was I wasn't sure if the little one knew who I actually was. And I've talked to people, Oh, you should have picked it up. No, I was worried about me, you know, and big daddy back there, not getting angry. Yeah. Fortunately, that young, young one lunged forward and got the little one up by the arm and pulled it back to her. Uh, at that point, folks, it was over. Uh, I mean, I, I didn't want any more curveballs. I looked over at the landowner and I said, I'm ready. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's go. go. Don't, don't let the little one get, <laughs> don't let the little one get me, you know, but as we were moving out and a lot of people have heard this and I've heard it since then many times is the big alpha male cocked his head back and gave out a perfect barred alcohol. Uh, very authentic. It sounded like a barred owl, but uh, uh, coming out of, wolf, you know, wolfers, you know, big, big wolfers. So anyway, that's, that's my, one of my close, I've got other stories, that's but I think, I think Larry's ready, ready to draw. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't expecting the whole family 
Uh, <laughs> Neither was I. I just got to look at that. Uh, yeah, that's that, incredible. We'll, we'll we'll get into more detail as we get uh, into the drawing. But so, which one are you going to describe tonight? The 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 male uh, in the I got the best look at him uh, just off to my right. Even though the female was there, uh, the moonlight wasn't quite as you know clear as as the first one. I mean, I'm looking right at him, and he's looking right at me. You know, faces illuminated. Uh, had had the the typical conical, you know. Yeah. Either it's either it's hair or it's their head, but it was a conical hair hairy head. Um, okay. Well, we'll start. We'll start uh, with that. Larry. Will, I think Larry will guide you. Okay. With um, you know what what sure. area next? But let like you say, let's start with that. Well, um, one, go go ahead, Daniel. Uh, well, you, you <coughs> Larry. It's all it's all yours. Um. Be sure, Richard, that anything that I draw that isn't right, you tell me because I, okay. you know, because I don't want to hurt my feelings or anything. You know, this, this, this is part of the process. So, so he had a conical head, slightly. Yeah, pretty much not not like a cone head, but you know, definitely pointed kind of at the top. You know, and curves over it. It just there was a you know loop curve at the top. It wasn't a you know a point exactly, but more is of that, a round rounded. Is point. that close? Oh, I can't. Let me see. Yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty close. It's a bit, a little bit light at the moment. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can see that. I'll actually pull him up. So. Okay. Yeah, I can see it. Is that too pointy at the top, or a bit more? No, no, that's about that's, that's about it. right. Okay. Yeah, that's about right. Okay, I'm going to start my pencil at the top of its head, and I assume it had a brow ridge. Yes, yes, down about where you have stopped the yeah. hairline. Yeah, two very distinct brow ridges on both sides. Oh, they, uh, it's divided yeah. in the middle. Yeah, if you divide it in the middle, one one eye, one brow ridge, you know, to the left side, very distinct. Okay. So did it go right across the head? Then there was a. There was a, a gap in the middle. Yeah, there was a gap in the yeah. middle, you know, where the nose nose would be, but right above the eyes, very distinct brow ridge on both, you know. Okay. Was it thick, Richard? Very thick, yes. Very thick, okay. Thicker than that? Yeah, but it broke in the middle. It didn't, all right, it didn't yeah. go all didn't go all the right. way across. And actually had actually had a little bit of a peak uh, in the middle of the ridge too. Okay. Like that. Uh, put a gap in there where the nose is going to go. Okay. On both sides, yeah, just stop it right there. And put a little peak in the in the ridge in, in the yeah, the top side. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, that'll work. So um Henry is asking what what area of Oklahoma was this? Or roughly, I don't want you to give away exactly, but Lake Lake Eufaula, okay. uh, east east of Lake Eufaula, uh, not not to Porham. There's a city called Porham. Uh, it wasn't that far east, but uh, east of Lake Eufaula, west of the city of Porham, Oklahoma. Okay, thank you. Okay, how would you describe the eyes? Very human-like. Uh-huh. Uh, very, very human-like. Uh, a medium, you know, not not Asian squint, not not round, super round Caucasian, but kind of a medium uh, almond shape. Okay. Slight um, slight almond shape. Does that make sense? Yeah. And right below the ridge. Right below the ridge. Yes.
Very good. Very that good. It? Yeah, that's it. That's it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, well I've had Carter. This is uh, definitely an original. Okay. Okay. So, did you, did you see any of the whites of the eye? Yes. Yes. Uh, just put the, the whole iris right kind of in the middle of that almond shape. Okay. Almost, to, you know, almost to the whole top and bottom, you know. But yeah, I could see very, very human like. Okay. Oh yeah, Close. and a very distinct pupil. I, I I saw his pupils. Yep. 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 Very good. I guess you work as an investigator. You've practiced at <laughs> taking in detail and stuff. Yeah, like that. I. Uh, I've, I'm a qualified expert witness in fire and explosions in state, federal, and local courts. It's it's a passion of mine, you know. Well, it's great. You've got that, you know, attention to detail. and. Well, it, the, these, Daniela, I didn't believe these things existed uh, until, you know, later in my life. And, and to have the, as... It's not difficult if if you learn a little courtesy and respect for these subjects. They they are very intuitive and take great offense at people uh, comparing them to a dumb animal. Uh, mm. They they don't they don't want it. They don't want that. They, they're they're not there now. They they do get entertained by scaring people or messing with people, you know. But as we talked about earlier. I've, I've had them had a banter with me, you know, I mean, show, show humor, you know, in the story we're like, very good, Larry. Very good. Now the nose was not smashed flat, but it was a broader uh, nose mm -hmm. that, that, that projected, you know, it wasn't a flat ape looking nose, but kind of a, kind of a Jimmy Durante type. Okay. All right. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm going to move my pencil down, and you tell me when to stop for the end of the nose. Okay. Right about there. When you said that they like to scare people, I always made a joke. I said, can you imagine a couple of Sasquatches standing next to a tree, and here comes some fat guy in camouflage <laughs> parading through the underbrush, and they're <laughs> looking at him going, where's a rock? <laughs> you know, when when I was early in my my field research, there was a guy that that went out, you know, with me. That was the better. He was a little less than six feet tall, but he was uh, pushing three hundred pounds. And we were in an area. It was the area where I had my first sighting. And I was telling him a, a way out. You know, this fence over there. And and he finally looked at me. Said, "Look, Rick, I can't run." <laughs> You know, I told him, look, if it goes south, we can run and hop over that fence and everything. And he just said, Rick, I can't run. I said, well, that's that's good for me. <laughs> yeah, you, you, know, know. you don't have to outrun him. That's it. Yeah. And, you know, above the nostrils there, it's kind of a circle, you know, a thick circle going up to the, you know, kind of circles. Very pronounced, you know, above the oh. nostril, you know, the little projection or the circle that a nose has yeah yeah, yeah. yes we have, we have a few like that with this circle on the nose yeah um yep 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 exactly now the one i saw didn't have the dark eyes like that and and his nose wasn't turned up but you know folks uh if you're looking at humans compare a a home grizzly homeless man with the Dallas Cowboys cheerleader, they're both human, but they they don't look anything alike, you know. 
and and you have oh that is that is good larry that is good oh okay you know? good yeah maybe a little shading showing the the bridge of the nose oh we know? will we will okay. that's, that'll come yeah, yeah okay. that's down the road a little bit okay now, the face kind of rounded you know not not long but and not not totally round but he was younger and his face was was kind of a round full face you know not not a, not a pro pronounced cheeks or cheekbone not really yeah okay. you, you know there was hair kind of sideburns and hair coming down beside his his uh, e uh his eyes and then behind it were the ears so i really there was enough facial hair i couldn't say if he had real chiseled cheeks or not there was kind of okay. kind of hair coming down there you know Okay. And you could see the ear? Oh yeah, both ears. Oh, okay. Or the ears I just wanted. <laughs> okay, so if I make his face just flat there or what you did know, you know? What about his lips? Putting his lips in, maybe that'll give it They were they were thin and and wide. Oh yeah, okay. About, and, about right there. Lip up just a little bit. Right there, right there. Just real thin, thin, wide lips. Okay, what do you think? Yeah, yeah. I mean, or you could make them, you know, when he wasn't, uh, uh, gawking at me with his jaw dropped, you know, they, yeah. he, his mouth closed, but when we first saw each other, his, his jaw was, was hanging open. <laughs> I'll bet. You know, but yeah, just kind of a, a pursed, you know, thin lip like that, you know, okay. they weren't, they weren't real thick and projecting, but you know, perfect. Uh, what about his chin? How far down was his chin? About, come on down right about there, right about there. And you say it was rounded here? Yep, yep, rounded. Yep, yeah, that yeah, yeah. Same on the other side. This is coming together quite easily. Some some of them are a bit of a struggle <laughs> with the detail. It's our witness. It's our witness. Yeah. Giving good detail. Yeah. Yeah. If you if you uh, how do you do the lips? If you you know you draw another line to show the bottom of the lip coming around and then the top. Yeah. Just, that, yeah just, that's got, that, that's all covered. I'll, okay. Uh, all right. Did, did, I got have, you. did they have a crease here? You know, I can't remember that. Uh, I, remember they, I, I don't. That. I don't recall a crease there. Um, what the about the line from here to here? Oh. The upper lip. There wasn't any facial hair on his lip, but I do. He had hair uh, under his chin. I mean, on his chin, about halfway up to his mouth. That was all hair there. Okay. Down, you know. Okay. All right. And Come there on. was hair coming down by the corner of his eye to about half of his half of his half of his cheek. Okay. All right. That was all kind of hair. Like like a thick sideburn, maybe. Is okay. That... I got you. All right. Let's start here up. Let's let's bring it home. <laughs> have you worked with forensic artists before? I assume Pardon? you have. Have you worked with forensic artists before? Uh, you know, maybe once or twice way oh, back man. there somewhere, but, uh, it wasn't me interacting with them. It was like witnesses that, you know, we put in contact with, you know, the forensic artists. Uh, I've talked to, uh, man, I can't even think of his name. Got a senior moment here. Uh, saw him in, in, uh, Colorado at, uh, with, uh, David Politis, uh, oh, he's, he's, uh, oh man. Not Steve Isdale. Pardon me? Scott Carpenter or Steve Isdale. 
No, no, he's he's Native American. Oh, uh, oh he's a, well known in the Bigfoot. He he worked for Oklahoma uh, Department of Justice. Uh, real nice guy, mm. but uh, can't think. Sorry, uh, I'm I'm having a senior moment. Uh, you know, I've I've talked with him at length, but you know, uh, I'm just I'm amazed at uh, Larry's ability. Man, has it, has it got it close? Yeah, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, yeah, you know, I'm looking, and uh, it just it it brings back uh, memories staring at this, you know, guy in the face, and it never, really, you know, never any any. Uh, now I could imagine getting the first look and one's roaring and growling and stuff. It would, you know. I'd probably have to change my drawers, but they were very, very uh, respectful. I, I guess I could say, you know, they, they were not doing other than the little one that bolted at me. That was totally, that was a wild card. I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. You know, uh, you know so, it, uh, how many encounters did you have before this? You know, we had, when my son and I had the rock thrown at us, it was in a tributary creek to this river system, East Trinity River uh, in North Texas. Uh, Rallet Creek uh, is where we had the first, the first, uh, uh, you know, rock throwing incident with my son. And by the way, my son does not go out with me. Uh, he's a grown man now, you know, got two daughters. He was 15 at the time. Uh, folks, to this day, he doesn't want any part of Bigfoot. That scared him that bad. You know, had a had a uh, producer based out of out of the UK, and I can't remember his name. Uh, does some Travel Channel stuff. Um, I'm trying to think of his name. Uh, I don't have any of my. I'm on the road. You know, I'm doing yeah. I'm doing other work, but uh, I could I could find it if I was at my house in my home office. Um, he wanted to do a reenactment and, uh, and, uh, he, uh, he, uh, uh, wanted my son in the reenactment and my son didn't want any part of it. Danielle, he said, no, nope, not interested. Right. I said, okay, you know, okay, <laughs> you know, point taken, but, so, uh, I mean, you seem to be having like a you know a positive experience with these things, but yeah. initially though, the first time, um, what was what what happened there? Well, we we went out this this heavy set guy I was t talking with you about. We went to the uh, exact spot where where we had the rock, you know, where I, I'd had that. Uh, we were paralleled. We were followed. Uh, had stuff tossed at us. Um, the, probably the, the main thing is that we found this little, uh, back in a, a, a swampy area, a uh, tree had been uh, toppled over and it was a, a, a natural bridge, you know, right there, made over, you know, a little part of the waterway or water, you know, inlet there. And it was like a light switch. I mean, it was just nice air. And then all of a sudden a real pungent, uh, it smelled like, something dead uh, in sewer water uh, mixed with a wet dog is the best way I could describe it. It, it was, it was putrid. I mean, it, it was, and it was strong and uh, 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 it, it was there. And then when we backed off uh, it disappeared as quickly as it came, came there, you know, but uh, I had my first sighting, uh, along the East Trinity River bottom, uh, brought some experienced people in there and they were pointing out stick structures and stuff that I wasn't paying any attention to. I thought wind had blown through here. And then they started showing the the weaving, the, the arch structures, you know, where little saplings had been pulled over and pinned by another tree, uh, other trees pulled up by the roots with root balls, you know, and moved and other trees not affected and started pointing stuff out. And I said, you know, you're right. A wind couldn't selectively do this. It's going to either, you know, blow down all the trees. It's not going to pick and choose, 
you know? Mm. And, and so uh, uh, they were saying, you know, uh, to, to look beyond the, 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 they called it windows, you know, where you've got foliage and stuff parting. There are other rows down further between those, those, those uh, breaks in the foliage. And I was standing there talking with one of the guys. We were facing each other and kind of looking over each other's shoulder. And I was scanning with binoculars. It was about 1030 in the morning, uh, July 24th, uh, 2010. So it's been 12 years ago. And uh, I noticed a, a twinkle or a glint of light uh, that was not, uh, there was no dew, you know, on the trees, but I noticed this, this glint of, of light at which caught my attention and I focused in and I'm looking at a bush and I'm, I'm looking for, you know, wet leaves or what did I just see right there? And this thing was so blending in with the, the bush or the foliage, I didn't key on it right away. But then all of a sudden I saw the, the uh, you know, it must have been an older one because the, 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 the hair was a gray or a white. It wasn't a brown or a black. Mm -hmm. But uh, the best way I, I could describe it is uh, Stephen Steele's and Nash group, the, the one guy that had the big forehead. I think that's Stephen Steele's. Anyway, that's what it reminded me of. He had a big open forehead with, with gray, and it was kind of conical shape. It was his sweaty forehead reflecting the morning light off of his forehead was the glint that I saw. And when I finally saw his face peering through the bush, he's looking right at me, you know, and it was pr probably 150 yards away. And I'm looking at him with seven by 50 binoculars. And I, and I, uh, you know, a gush of adjectives came out of my mouth and the guy standing there says, well, what is it? I said, there's one. He's right here. <laughs> He's right, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of losing it a little bit. And I'm trying to walk closer and keep the subject in my, you know, with the binoculars. Daniela, that doesn't work in the forest. You know, you got to watch where you're stepping. I hit a bush and almost face planted. And by the time I, I did kind of a quick limbo to keep from falling on my face and I got the binoculars back up there, that subject was gone. The, the bush was moving, but he saw his opportunity to move and he was out of there. Now, one of the other researchers thought it was us. He said, yeah, I heard somebody coming down the, the, uh, the, the creek there. I th he thought it was one of, one of us, you know, but. Mm. Well, emotion, I mean, emotionally, how did you feel when you, when you eventually, you know, I, I thought I, I got my visual sighting and I thought everybody would believe me including my wife. Well, guess what? <laughs> it doesn't work that way, Daniela. They don't believe they exist and almost nothing you can present to them uh, will change their mind. And I almost think it's, it's like they, they don't want to uh, believe that, well, I, I had a good friend of mine out one time. He was great out in the woods pointed out all kinds, loves getting out there. But he just told me, he said, Rick, I just don't believe in him. And I said, I said, well, if, if you ever saw one, what would you do? Of course, in this, this kind of uh, sexist, but he said, I'd scream like a girl, you know? And, and he basically, he, he was honest with me. He said, I can't wrap my mind around it. He said, it's, it's easier for me to hide behind denial I'm in a safe place there than to seriously con contemplate these things exist. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. You know, kind of like the uh, few good men where the, where the uh, uh, commanding officer says you can't handle the, you know, or the prosecutor. That's right. One of the prosecutors he said, you can't handle the truth. So I just think, people can't wrap their mind around the fact that these things actually exist, you know? Yeah, exactly. It's having to see it, isn't it? Pe people are going wow. to have to see it to believe it as much as everybody believes you, 
your encounter, you know, Kerry's encounter, the, the countless people that have been on that we all know have seen it. Um, for those that haven't seen it, we're in a different place, you know, and I can say that from because I haven't seen one. And, you, you know, and it, it's all based on trust. And, you, you know, you have to trust these people, uh, you and Kerry. Uh, I believe that you've seen one. Uh, and, you know, as much as I believe they're out there, until I see one, I really haven't got a grasp on what these things are. I, I well, have no idea, you, you know. Daniela, I've been I've been interacting with them for, you know, a number of years. And I have more questions than answers mm. over over some of the stuff that they do. OK, uh, you know, there are a lot of Bigfoot research groups that have a they have expectation bias to their to their scientific method. They have set parameters. If anything is out of these parameters, they immediately toss it out. They poo poo it rather than considering all possibilities as the scientific method dictates, you know, you form opinions and, uh, you know, preliminary opinions, you make corrections. And as, as more information comes in, you know, that's the scientific method. I mean, there, there's, there's so much to this, but there, there are things that I've documented, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't, I won't go into them. People call them woo factor and, and other things, but uh, these things are incredibly uh, gifted and, and do things how they do some of the things they do. I've got night vision of uh, three of them on a rock ledge and I've got other people there. I pass my flair to them. They saw these subjects. But Daniela, in certain sections, they are on a, a sheer rock face with a few little ledges and a few little caves. But any slip and fall 30 feet into the rocks would probably be fatal for any human. And these things are bouncing around over there like, like you know, kids on a playground. You know, they were not uh, intimidated by the, the sheer face and and. You know, I guess rock climbers would have a blast over there, but they'd be very methodical and it'd be in the daytime. It wouldn't be at night. But uh, they were moving at times, Daniela, like uh, like a movie on fast forward. I mean, very lightning quick, you know, and it wasn't my camera, you know, malfunctioning. They just had a lot of pop and snap when they wanted to. I mean, one dove into a cave and then came back out and it was just like he was on a string or something, you know, just wow. incredibly fast. Mm. Yeah. I hear uh, it a lot. I mean, sorry, Larry. So they climb trees too, people don't know that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And I they climb, climb them very well like coconut harvesters. One of, yeah. my, one of my YouTube videos, uh, I've got an enhanced uh, where you see them better. It's not all my jerking. Cause I was at 508 yards, uh, with a tripod and, and by no means a, uh, high dollar rig, but I watched him for, you know, probably five, six minutes setting up in the tree watching us. It was a loblolly pine. Uh, he was up about 60 feet up the, the tree and, uh, uh, just watching us, you know, checking us out, you know, the group that we were with yeah, and, and everything. And uh, yeah, I've, I've got uh, the, uh, the episode with the uh, rock in the, in the uh, folding chair, one of the other mixed blood native brothers. Uh, I've got one in a tree watching us a uh, picture clip. Now it's not a portrait, you know, somebody's going to say blob squatch, but you can see the, the thermal signature, he's hiding, watching us through the the V or split in the main trunk. He's got his head down in there looking, but you can see his arms. You can see his head. He blends in quite well. Uh, another side peeker there. You can see him look, peering around the uh, tree trunk. Uh, I've got side peekers at night on, on m multiple occasions with my thermal. I don't know if they 
know what a thermal scope is or they don't care with me, but, uh, you know, uh, I just go out to see what they're going to do, you know, and, and go out with people that, uh, may not, you know, believe, but want to come out and we'll see what happens. You know, you sent, uh, you sent me a couple of Im images. Um, can I share those? Yeah, absolutely. Certainly. So, so this is, um, tell us about this. Okay. This is the day that I had my visual sighting. Uh, we were going down a trail and, and the large man, uh, saw something bolt across the, uh, the trail. I raced up there and felt I was being watched. And I just clicked a bunch of pictures in a circle. Uh, matter of fact, I had this photo for, oh, months before I actually went through it carefully and caught this person uh, here or this subject. Uh, if you look at this, it looks like a cue stick, but if you'll look off to your left, uh, that would be his right arm. Uh, you can actually see him holding. You can see part of his thumb and his hand. He's holding that branch in front of his eyes. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. All right. Yep. See, see? and he's, He's peering through there. You can see his left, his right eye looks white because I was using fill in flash. His left eye, which will be to your right, uh, is dark right there, but that's his head. If you go over more to your right, kind of to that white uh, branch or, you know, limb going up, you can actually see part of his shoulder and maybe an elbow back there or his derriere. I'm not sure, you know, but he's, He's crouched down in a stick pile watching me, you know, yeah. uh, there's one picture. Did I, did I show you the, the actual distance without the crop? There's another big go. There's no, another. I think you only, let me have a look. Let me go back and see um, what you sent me. There's one that just shows the, the, the branches and trees and everything, but. Oh, okay. Yeah. Give me one second to um, just get it down there. Um, wow there you are you're amazing <laughs> oh thank you oh he is he is he is um, amazing that's it now you can see this is the actual distance daniela and it's like this all around me 360 degrees but if you'll go up that white tree right in the middle of the picture to that that those branches and you can see his head, just that brown spot. This is the actual distance without cropping. That is how well hidden he was. What are the chances if a person was walking down this trail, glancing over, that they're even going to see that little dark spot in, in, yeah, in, exactly. in that stick pile? That's how well they hide, you know? And I've gotten good at picking them out. I don't know. I don't know if it's a sixth sense or what, but uh, people have said, you know, how'd you see him? You know, and I've been out with a group of people and we're filming and I'm getting the pictures of them because I knew right where to look. You know, it's almost like, okay, the big guy uh, up in the tree that I got at 528 yards is I walked away from this dozen people. We were down in kind of an open valley area. And uh, I just, I walked away where I could clear my head. And I said, okay, big boy, I can feel you watching me. Where are you? <laughs> That's when the first call up on the ridge, he, he, he called out. And then I got the binoculars looking in the direction of the call and found him up there. 528 yards up up the the ridge and it's a pretty good it's a pretty good picture uh, of him or our video that i've got uh i'm trying to i could all send you the link can you can you play videos on this podcast yeah okay yeah. i'll send you all you know i'll send you the link to it uh when we get off i can't uh, i've got my little chromebook with me i don't have my other computer and and I'm very uh, limited here. You know, okay. I, was, I was on the road, 
you know, for work and I don't have all my stuff with me. No. Now, have you got a YouTube channel? Do what? You don't have a YouTube channel, do you? Yes, yes, I do. Yes, oh, I you do, do right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Richard uh, Stewart Taylor, I think is, is now. you know, but it's, uh, I'm trying to think of that, that one video, but Richard Stewart Taylor. Yeah. If you've got YouTube there, you, you can probably find oh, yeah. uh, Bigfoot up in a tree or I'm trying to, I've got my list. Hey, if I gotten older, Danielle, I, if I don't have it on a piece of paper in front of me, yeah, you know, um, not, not as sharp as I used to be, you know, Sure but. you are. Sure you are. I'm just trying to find your actual channel because there's a few. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, if I said I could probably, you know, maybe no, I, I won't. You can you can look. Um, I don't think you'll lose us if you just put the, if you just put the um, minimize the uh, page. Um. um I could bring up another. I mean, I could I could do another screen, but yeah, I'm I'm a little. Uh, okay. I'll tell you what, I've got. If I jumped over, I've got two up on the top. If I go over to my Facebook page, get the link, I could send it to you there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I, you won't lose me here, then, right? No. And if you do go, just come back on that link. You okay, know, you, you can you can still hear me, correct? Yep. I can still hear you, yeah. Okay, I may be able to do this here. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure you can. You you shouldn't lose the um, you shouldn't lose the. Uh, well, so that that shows you how techno challenged I am. You know, I I, I try to uh, kind of spoon feed myself. I mean, my, I've got little granddaughters. The other day, they've they've got iPads. You know. <laughs> And she was four years old and we had changed routers. You know, we'd had problems with it and they put a new router in, you know, our internet service. And my wife says, you know, babe, can you, can you put the new, you know, links? And I, I'm thinking, man, I don't want anything about that iPad. And my little four year old, she goes here, Popsy. She had already got it on the, the page to put the, uh, <laughs> I mean, she called, she called, she brought it up to me you know and had it on the page all i had to do is put the put the uh the password in you know and uh wow it uh the thing you know we use it for what we need don't we you, you know and you it, just, as needed, it, as it, needed. It, yeah. and that's just the way it is isn't it yeah um, that's yeah i yeah, mean you have a look for that link and I'm, um, send it to me yeah i'm gonna uh, i'll get there I've got it on my, my Facebook page and I'm trying to scroll down to it. It's kind of very slow. Um, it'll get there eventually. Okay. I think I've, let's see. How are you doing, Larry? Oh, I'm third apart the cloudy. Yeah. Usual then. Yeah. This is an interesting looking one, isn't it? It is. It is. I'm really enjoying this. Well, I'm enjoying watching you, you know, nice. it was uh, a once in a lifetime uh, experience that, you know, I'll carry it to my grave, whether anybody else believes me or not, it is phenomenal, but I've got it. I've got it in my book. Uh, I believe these are a tribal uh, entity. They're not. Uh, you know, dumb animals, they, they do incredible things. And a lot of native history before uh, the European settlement of America had a lot of information on these subjects. And uh, it's, it's incredible. Some of the uh, stories, if you follow and I'm having trouble finding this link. I've just put a link. I've just put a link to your book in the chat there. Okay, good deal. No. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it, it, uh, it's 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 more of a booklet. You know, I mean, it's just the. Well, I cannot find. I'll tell you what. I can probably. 
I, I'll, I'll do this. I'll copy. I can't find the video, but I can. Well, I don't know if the Chromebook will do it or not. Come on. Let's see. I thought it would. I'm trying to right click and it's not doing anything. It's not doing it. No. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah, you know, my other computer was giving me problems, so I just somebody said, "Hey, get a Chromebook. They're 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 inexpensive, and they, but they, they're limited on some of the stuff they can do, you mm -hmm. know." But I thought yeah. I've got a good picture of one up in the tree there, but I'm trying to trying to get to the link because I know I man, I thought it was. Let me think now. I know I. If you need to go out, go out and come back in. I, I think it'll like, work. I, I'm trying to remember who I sent the link to. Maybe I'll go to my uh, my uh, message page. I think I may ha have something on. Okay. I thought that, I thought it was on my Facebook page somewhere, and it's not. And I know I recently sent it out. To different people, I just can't remember who it was. <laughs> oh man, isn't isn't getting? Hey, it, it comes with the territory, I guess. You know. Uh -huh. Hey, I'll be seventy in May, oh. and I do do I have Parkinson's too. So this well, is I, Larry, I just turned sixty nine, so I'm right behind you. Yeah. <laughs> I think Larry does amazing, especially, you know, with his Parkinson's. Uh, but this is good for him. This uh, it's good therapy for Larry. Abs absolutely. Absolutely. Maybe, what do you think? Let me go back over oh, there. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. No, no, no. No, no that's fine. Uh, yeah. Like, we've got 331 in the chat. Can we get 331 likes? That would really wow. support the channel. Um, wow. It'd be that, great if I could see all those likes. I know I sent the links. I just can't find where <laughs> at this point. I'd love to put it up because it's, uh, I'm trying to think. I've got it in, in file. Let me see if I can bring up files. Let me see. I don't want to overload this Chromebook and, and lose you, but it seems to be doing, it seems to be doing okay. Okay. Um, I may be able to uh, find it this, this way. Well, let me, while I'm here, I'm fine. let's see if I can copy and paste this. It's not letting me. Oh, maybe. Not share it. Just share it to me. Let me see. Uh, okay. Um, I've got it. Let me see. I was trying to copy it off my files and it's, I'm right clicking and it's not doing anything. Right. So, okay. So, can you, mm. can you uh, email it to me? Let me see. Um, where would the share? I know this sounds like, let me see. No, I don't want to delete it. Okay. Yeah. There's share right there. Okay. See All right. Share it so, to me. Maybe. It says upload photos. Let's see. I've got a duo, a nearby share. Uh, let me see. This is uh Okay, there's one file there. Okay, upload. Okay, I've uploaded the photos. Now, where's upload complete? Uh, now, how do I, let me see. Let me go back. Let's see. Let me see if I can. Oh, that um, mouth. That mouth looks creepy. <laughs> Let's see. Um, wait, you know, I, 
I'll tell you what. Let me do it this way. Okay. I'll attach a photo. All right. Yeah, I think I've I think I've found something here. Don't I, I think I've found a, a way. The, the, some, there is some, some people could just like probably do it quick. I had to kind of go. There is All right. There this, is one, one. This, this one here is the Missouri. Uh, he's sitting on a ledge. I'll, I'll just, I just sent it to you. He's sitting on the ledge uh, across the creek from us. <laughs> He, right. And he's he's casually got his legs spread, and he's just sitting there. He's about thirty yards away from us. So is this a the thermal? Is this a thermal? Therm yeah, this is a thermal image. Okay. I'm gonna try and share it this way. That's interesting. Yep. That's him. <laughs> wow. Uh, Larry, a little more distinct lips on him. Uh, okay. You, Ed, Edmund G. Robinson lips. You, you remember that? Edmund G. Robinson? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He had lips kind of like that. Does that kind of say a lot? Yeah. Kind of right there where the the nose and that little crease kind of a little up, you know, thin, thinner, thinner than that, uh, a little thicker than that. Oh, a little thick. Oh, okay. Yeah, thicker. Yeah, the shape of the head on that. Um, I don't, I'm just gonna get it up here on um, Streamyard. That is a real point, isn't it? Yeah. On that head, on that image. Yeah. yeah, that thermal image. Yeah. Wow. Almost looks like a cone head, you know? Yeah, literally. And I didn't think that, that he saw me. I was I was looking through. Matter of fact, let me do this. Let me go back. I'll show you the actual view. I, I went back to that location a year later. I was looking at that, Daniela, through... through uh, a thermal. We drove up to a real remote spot. I got out, and I mean, I saw the road, but you know, driven there, never been there, didn't know what it looked like in the daytime. And a guy just drove up, and we got out. And man, I couldn't see my hand in front of my face. I could hear the river or creek, and I didn't want to walk down there, you know, and off into the water. So I was just kind of fumbling around on the on the the bank there and i happened to pick you know pick out these subjects or these thermal images across the creek from us and they were chunking stuff all over you know uh, i wasn't sure at times whether you know it was uh, uh something coming through the brush or something roll you know tossed through and rolling down you mm. know down the but it was fun it was fun yeah that like i said at the beginning there's so much more to you because um i kind of brought you in in the middle of everything <laughs> without starting at the beginning but you've done a lot of research and oh yeah oh yeah you know i know you have we've talked before the show and um <clears throat> people are still trying to find your youtube channel um yeah i need to i can get it i can get it too i'm trying to this, this, uh, you know, it may be on a, a flash drive. I think I've got it on a flash drive. I thought I had, I've got very limited stuff on this. I'm going to go back to my uh, Facebook and see if I can find the. Uh, it would actually be great to get you <clears throat> back on one night on the researchers report. I love sharing. I don't yeah. try to, well, I don't we'll try to. That. Yeah, we can um, <clears throat> plan it a bit better uh, so you can have all your, all your, your images and your video, whatever. Um, I was in Montana and uh, was with a group, uh, BFRO, you know, some, some oh, people, yeah. 
uh, there's a lot of good people in it. You know, mm-hmm. I, I, I meet a lot of wonderful people and I go, I, I'm unassuming. I just, I hang out and see what's going to happen. But we were watching our camp from across the Valley and, uh, there was something dark watching the camp. Well, when I turn in at night, Danielle, I don't get up to do any squatching. I'm, 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 I'm going to sleep. <laughs> I, I'm, I, I don't care, you know, and I've had them come up knocking on uh, a trailer with me sleeping and, and I don't get up and, and I just told them, please let me sleep. You know, mm-hmm. I don't, I, I'm just, I'm through. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get my beauty rest. <laughs> and so uh, I was up in Montana and it was like about four in the morning and, at my age, I'm, I'm, I'm due probably two good trips. And the way I have it set up is I've got a camper shell. Uh, I don't want, uh, uh, you know, I have to go find a bush. So I, I put a 10 by 10 uh, covering that's tarped in. And then I have a little porta potty tent. So I don't, I don't have to leave other than get out of my camper shell and go to my little restroom. And I was, I was standing in there and we're north of Yellowstone Park. There's grizzly bear around there, you know, or we saw a black bear and the cubs just down the road before dark. And I'm standing there right in the middle of my, you know, constant, well, just, you know, emptying my bladder and this uh, grunt, I, I heard the heavy foot footprints first and then I heard the grunt and uh or huffing and i was back in you know i I immediately you know finished and sprang back into the camper shell next day there was a whole set of footprints where they had walked right by you know there was a big guy outside there and probably just they've shaken the camper shell and i just tell them look i'm tired would you please let me sleep and i've had no problems daniela not none Mm -hmm. You know, how's that mouth? <clears throat> well, I can't find that link, man. I'm sorry. Okay, let me go back over to the stream. Yeah. Part. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get that. Yeah, you know. Uh, yeah. Is that it? Yeah, that's in his. You know, in his kind of a little bit. Now that you got the face, the there. The, the top of his head's a little more full, higher, I guess, okay. or a little more uh, the peak being a little higher and, and kind of rounded off a little bit, you know. There you go. Then bring it down right from there. There we go. All of that's hair. And then all the way to the brow ridge. Yep, all the way down. Yes, yes, yes. All that's hair. Um, give him kind of, kind of a sideburn into the face. Now the ears start right about there, where where yeah, uh, higher, 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 at right there, and then have they weren't sticking out very far. Okay, you know, but what, just what, what they look like. Uh, it's hard to let that it wasn't a real pronounced, uh, lobe or anything. They were kind of close to the face. Yeah. Uh, very human like ear, you know, uh, so if we want something like, um, that a little bit, a little further out, a little more pronounced than that. Now uh, we don't often yeah. hear if hear yep. if he is. Okay. Is. Down. Is that, yeah, down. Is. Come on down and then taper in and then come back. In. Well, yeah. Before you before you hit his edge of his face, come back down into the lobe. Oh, okay. Right about there and then come back out with the lobe. Yeah. 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 Yep. Weren't real see? pronounced, okay. but hair hair kind of in between the, the edge of his you know, probably covering about a, a third of the ear, just hair coming down. Oh, okay. All right. 
Everybody's asking for a YouTube link. I don't want to put any pressure on you. <laughs> <laughs> let me go. Let me go what? back. Oh man. Uh, okay. Let me see. Well, you. Know, well, no, that's not my link. That was a talk over in the man. I wish I was more techno on this stuff. It's let okay. Me, well, I, I, I would have had all that, you know, I was, I'm, I'm on the road on a business trip, you know, and I told you, yeah. I just wasn't totally prepared for all of this, but I love sharing. I'm trying to think of who I sent this to. Well, um, like I said, we can always, we'll, we'll definitely have you back uh, to go through your, you know, your research and um, some of the stuff that you've captured. Oh, it's, it's, okay. it's really good. It's yeah. fun. It's yeah. fun. No, I don't. Uh, I know I sent it to somebody. It'd be easy. I could just share that, I guess, copy and paste. Let me see. Uh, I didn't do that. Okay. I was, uh, There's another way we can do this if you want to try. How's that? Um, so if you put the video up on your screen, is it? Actually, can you get it where you can see it? where you just have to press play you know let me oh it's just taking me back to, okay that that was um man i'm frustrated now let me think let me think okay it wasn't there i'm trying to find just the link i thought it was on thank you mike uh, for that and yeah hit everybody hit the like button please give us a, a <laughs> like or a, a dislike if you don't like it <laughs> uh, up or down it doesn't really matter it just shows that you support the channel and i know you do support the channel but it's really good for the um algorithms and just helps us you know get get us out there um i'm working on it see nuge um uh, i am working on it okay i've got other videos i've found but I, I, I can't find the big guy up in the tree. Oh man, I, I love to share too. That's that's what's frustrating me. I'm, let me find some pictures. You know, well, like you I, say, you're not at home. It's not like you've got all your stuff where you know it is. Exa you know? Exactly, and this Chromebook is very limited. You know, I've got a few things on it, but I just, uh, I've got a couple other videos. They're thermal videos. Wait a second. Let me let me see this here. I may be able to find something here. Um. Okay. Big Bilk Bilk Farmer is it? Daniela, please can you mention Midnight Owl to Rick? <laughs> that's the that's the name uh, the forest people gave me. Midnight Owl. Okay. And one of their, one of the things they do, uh, when I'm in an area, is I've told people I said don't and, and people so oh, I hear it all the time. But I mean, uh, I said I've I've told them don't be surprised if you don't hear an owl call. And uh, I had here's an interesting picture that I can that I can share with you, Daniela. Uh, they say if you go visit them, they'll come visit you, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, back watering my lawn in uh, 2013, uh, they, uh, I had something race by me and it didn't, it didn't, it didn't scare me. You know, I didn't get all upset, but I, I didn't know what it was. I thought it was a bird flying by. And there had been a lot of odd stuff come, going on around the house that I won't get into here. It's a long story, but my, she's not a disbelieving, but my wife uh, is not interested in going out squatching and stuff, you know, and, and there was a lot of odd stuff going on around the house. And she just asked me, she said, babe, what is going on? And, uh, I had my suspicions. It was some of the juveniles, you know, pranking around, not being malicious, but there were things that, that, that happened 
uh, weird stuff. Again, I want not, not dangerous, but, you know, head scratching stuff saying, how did that happen? You know? Yeah. And uh, I well, was. I, sorry. I was, I, go ahead. Is it the rock rock flies by in front of your video? Yeah. Oh, I can I can see that on your Facebook, so I can share it. I can do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, oh, the rock. Yeah. Yeah, it goes right. It goes right by in uh, in front of me there. Yeah. Okay, hang on a sec then. Well, I was looking. Let me I see. Wanted to, wanted to, um... Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of video somewhere on my Facebook page. There is the the big guy up in the tree. You know, and it's. Uh, he looks like Patty, you know, or, or very similar to Patty. Okay. If you look back on stream now, now you'll see the video. I've got the video up. Oh, okay. Good deal. Let me go back to stream. Now I got to get out of this. Okay. I was looking for, for some. Yeah. Um, that's the creek. The big guy. The, you see one. You can just see this head. And again, you know, there, there the rock goes by. Um, I'm about 30 yards away from the subject up there on the, the ledge. The ledge would be to the left of where I'm looking now. Mm -hmm. But uh, that that takes, let me see, nine frames per second. Uh, that rock took three frames, so three-ninths of a second. And I kind of estimated uh, the distance to be about 20 feet based on the vehicle of where it was. It didn't hit the vehicle. It's a flat piece of shell. That's a uh, enhanced uh, picture. The outer perimeter would have cooled, so your heat signature is not as pronounced. The core, which you see much better, uh, is, you know, it was a flat kind of a shell rock, maybe like they were throwing it Frisbee style. I know on uh, some of my, my thermal, they're throwing underhand, like, like people would throw a Frisbee. And I was just showing there's a, there's a rabbit that's an even heat signature because it's a mammal. The rock cooled on the outer edges. That's that's one. He's partially occluded, but you can see his head and shoulders. He's in foliage on the, uh, there's a little cave there. I could show you the picture in the daytime. He's kind of looking down. There's, there's the other one sitting on the ledge. I think he was the one that threw the rock wow. toward, towards me. Yeah. And, uh, we, we watched them for a better part of an hour and there were other people in the group. I handed my thermal to, I've got a, I've got, I shared some side peakers that was in Georgia, uh, had a, had a, had a few newbies come up and, uh, it, it was, I think, I think I can find that video. I was just watching them, you know, right there, kind of, <laughs> yeah. you know, Anyway. I, uh, there's only so much I can see because we're not I yeah. mean, we're connected on Facebook, but not friends, so I can't see all your stuff. But um, we'll definitely get you back on because you're <laughs> so interesting. Uh, well, it, I, I love this, Daniela. I mean, look, I've been very fortunate to have a whole lot of stuff go on, and uh, I'm not I'm not there to uh, merchandise them per se. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I've got books that I haven't made a lot on, but I like sharing is the yeah. thing. I'm, I'm semi-retired and, you know, I'm, I'm not independently wealthy, but I've got everything taken care of and I'm comfortable. And mm -hmm. this is just a passion of mine to, uh, to share. I know how much hunger I had, uh, for information when I was first starting out f looking for answers and I just got disappointed in so many guys talking at these conferences that, that weren't showing me anything. They were had theories and they had old stories and, you know, heard about the eight Canyon incident, you know, yada, yada, yada. And then I share my stuff and I had a group tell me, Oh no, you couldn't have seen a Bigfoot. That's too close to Dallas. They're they're not they're not that close to, to major cities. What? <laughs> you know, 
unproven, preconceived idea uh, with, that wasn't valid at all. I, yeah. I, you know, and I told him, I said, I don't care what you think. I know what I experienced, you know, yeah. and it wasn't an animal. It wasn't anything that, you know, I don't know. It's just, you're actually, you're actually going out there and, and, you know, yeah. well, I started going out there cause I wanted exactly. answers for myself. I got tired of sitting behind the computer, you know, trying to find answers or going to these conferences. I said, you know what? I'm just going to get out there and see what happens. And I wasn't, I wasn't disappointed, you know, they, uh, <laughs> they, they, uh, and I don't know if it, it couldn't be, uh, the Cherokee connection. I was in, in Kentucky here a couple months back. Uh, I was watching a side peaker in my thermal. There was a group of about 12 of us. Uh, one guy was a newbie. I handed my thermal to him. I said, can you see anything? He said, yeah. He said, there's one, I see him peeking. I see his head and shoulders peeking out from around the tree. I said, keep watching him. And we could hear activity off to our right. There was a little side creek that came out from that river uh, bottom where the trees were. And I looked over to my right and I said, now tell me what he does. And I said, got the uste, de judo. And uh, I said, did he do anything? He said, no. I said, so I said it louder. I looked over and I said, got the uste, de judo. And uh, uh, then about five seconds after that, and I got it on audio, I get a one syllable reply from the one closest to us. Okay. What, what had you said to them? Oh, I said, what is, I was asking them what their name, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I was asking them what their name. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It would be good to, to share that. Well, uh, help. Yeah. You know, I mean, my, my Cherokee's got English accent. I, by no means, you know, uh, my, my grandmother was fluent, you know, my uncles and aunts were fluent, you know, and our, Remember, as a little kid, they're talking, and I'm trying to understand them, and they kind of smiled and said, we're talking your grandma's language. But anyway, yeah, I was asking. It's kind of a passion. Kentucky was the original Cherokee uh, land, and uh, I got a one-syllable reply, but the other people talking, uh, and they, they weren't being rude. They were just quietly back there in folding chairs talking, I can't get the the exact enunciation, but I'm thinking they said no because clah, clah. You know, I think that's what they said was no. <laughs> but I'm not sure. You know, I, I want to uh, I want to converse again with them in 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 Cherokee. You know, greet them and and see what uh, you know. I mean, I, I a lot of times I'll refer Agua Oscar Oscar. You know. Uh, big guy, you know, and again, my, my Cherokee's probably got a lot of English in it, but, uh, it's the, the language of my grandmother and grandfather. And, uh, it, it, it's neat, you know, yeah. Yeah, it's, but anyway, it's no, it's fascinating. Um, I know there's just so much more as well that you've, you've got, uh, to tell, um, let's go back to the mind speak um yes how 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 is that coming across like a thought transferal are you hearing a different voice are you it's a it's voice? very it's it's different than thinking to yourself you know you can think of words to yourself if if larry if you'll bring the hair all the way down the cheek and connect it with what you got on the, uh, yeah, exactly. That's it. Um, well, how, does it look, how, how does it look? It, it looking good, you know, just bring that hair down and, yeah. and, and yeah, <laughs> he was a younger one, you know, his, his face wasn't, he, he had very, very kind of human, human look to it, you know, and, and a lot of people, they say they look real human, but, Okay, I, I kind of sidetrack. Uh, it's okay, but um, yeah, the, I mean, they're all have these different looks. That's the thing. Um, they're they're all different. I mean, they're you the younger ones. Some of them, 
uh, look look more apish. They they're uglier. But I'm, I mean, I've seen a lot of babies that were <laughs> that were ugly. You know, had very you know pronounced. They weren't soft baby features. You know, I mean, a face only a mother could love. But anyway, uh, the mind speak. Uh, it's hard to to put into. It's an experience. It's it's very profound. Danielle, if it if it happens to you, you're gonna know, okay. And there have been people that it wasn't cordial; it scared the daylights out of them, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, that basically, I was with a group, and we were we were trying to instill interaction, and and the I've got a picture of a of one that was chunking rocks at, at some ladies. It was a pretty good sized rock. They were up the hill there, and I've got—I don't think I got the video on the Chromebook. Uh, I'll, I'll be more prepared the next time I come on. Um, but we were trying to instill interaction, and and basically it was female. I, I knew that, and she said, "I have children with me, and I do not know these people." You know, very simple. Bunch of strangers in their neighborhood. You know. And she just, as a mother, did not want her young, uh, you know, exposed. Now, on that same area, the other side of the mountain range, or not mountains, but I was there with a group. We were in the middle of uh, a road, very remote access road, and we had activity right there. I, I've got a video of, of side peekers watching us. Now you got to understand, Danny. They're not going to come out from behind the tree and, and do a tap dance, but it's like knots on the tree. You can see them grow and swell as they get a good look, and then it recedes back. It's like the side of the trees breathing on the thermal. You know, it, it looks like a you know a picture negative, and you know the side peakers they they're not showing but just a little, you know, the profile of their head. If some people saw it. They, they think it was a knot on the tree. They're that good. But, hmm. you know, obviously you can see it in the video moving. And uh, uh, on the, 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 the We need to see movement, don't we, to, to, to add a bit more to these things. Well, um, yeah. Uh, the, the big guy up in the tree, it's a good video. You can see his head turn a little bit. Uh, he's mainly sitting, okay. I've got pictures and I can send you that too. There are about three or four loblolly pines with a dog leg structure. In other words, way at the top, about 60 feet up this in this tree towards the top, uh, the whole tree trunk does a dog leg left and then, you know, up, up again and higher. And it's in, in the same area. There's three or four trees with this real unique, you know, characteristic. And I had a forester uh, that I was interacting with. They said, look, if you break the main feeder of a sapling pine, that, that middle main feeder, one of the side branches will become the dominant feeder and you get that characteristic dog leg, you know, where it, it goes up, goes over and then goes back up. Makes a great saddle, you know, to sit on. Yeah. This this was on a tactically high ridge. And from that point, you could see 360 degrees. Anything approaching that that ridge, you would be able to see. In other words, it was a great lookout post. And and he said that for that to happen, you got to break that dominant feeder. I could see one from the wind or a natural occurrence, but a whole group of them there. My question or my statement is, was that a preconceived act years ago in order knowing that someday that would be a, like a good lookout post? Just saying. Yeah, no. <laughs> the scuffing on that, that tree uh, that I saw, oily kind of scuffing. Uh, matter of fact, DNA was extracted from that area. I won't go any further there. Uh, won't, won't mention a group, won't mention any names, but yeah, there was DNA uh, taken from there later after the, the spot was identified. But I thought they went up that thing like a coconut harvester, you know? Right. 
wow. Yeah. Oh, it's incredible. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the hair on the cheeks? More hair, yeah. More hair over. Okay, from like here in this position? Yeah, this yeah, position? yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, about there. Going back to the, you know, going back to the, uh, the line on the side. How does it make you feel seeing that? He, uh, well, you know, it's kind of a warm, fuzzy feeling, you know, because he was, he was getting a good look at me and I was getting a good look at him. Uh, he, he maintained his position. He didn't, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Both sides. That, that's it. That's it. Both sides. Yeah. He was about my height. I don't remember looking up or down at him, you know, uh -huh. but massive through the shoulders. I mean, I'm, I'm six foot and about 200 and I'm in my two forties and, uh, uh, he easily was 400 pounds, you yeah. know, a lot broader and wa wider, you know. <laughs> Were you getting anything off his expression, what he might have been thinking or? Well, this one, this one's, you know, kind of more of a pensive look, you know. I mean, when he first looked at me, those lips were kind of, the jaw was dropped and, and those lips were kind of pursed in a O shape, you know, kind of a, a exclamation, you know, type look, you know, whoa, you know, uh, just, I was probably doing this. We were looking at each other. He was getting a good look at me and I was getting a good look at him. Wow. <laughs> you know, and uh, I, I just, Danielle, I don't fear them. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm observant, uh, you know. I believe they're tribal and most of them just want to survive. They don't want to be bothered. Um, they're very leery and distrustful of people and rightfully so. Mm -hmm. uh, people, some people, the first thing they do is, is they, they get fearful and a lot of people have been chased, but I'm thoroughly convinced it's like a, a like what you do out on a farmhouse chasing chickens you're not really catching them you know of course i mean maybe one for dinner you know later but for the most part you know chasing birds you know spooking birds and stuff that's basically what they're doing in most instances for people uh, again i come back to there are dangerous roads rogues out there you probably want nothing to do with you know i don't think they're all unconditionally warm and fuzzy and uh uh so I'll how, tell you, how do you feel about 411 then and the, and the connection that, you know, David Pilates is putting to, to be? There, there are other things out there I've documented I haven't got into. I don't know what they are. Mm -hmm. uh, they're very, uh, they're observant and they're watching. They're nothing like the big guys. Uh, I'll just, I'll leave it at that. That's a, that's a whole other episode. There are things out there that I, I think people, you're, it isn't Disneyland out there. What, what injured and killed settlers a hundred years ago or 200 years ago is still out in the woods. And I definitely uh, encourage everybody to have a safety plan. I don't mean carrying guns. That's, that's a personal, you know, uh, preference, but have a safety plan in place. Yeah. Uh, I don't, Oh man, I was out alone one time and that's another story too. Something incredible happened to me. Uh, I still don't have all the answers to, but, uh, you know, I, I'm a firm believer. Again, I go back to my faith. Uh, I believe in a hedge of protection. I think the creator has his hand on me. And if my heart remains pure, uh, I've got nothing to worry about. Now I'm not going to go out there and and, and, you know, stretch or, or exceed. Uh, I was in an area uh, where there was a subject side peeking. I had my wife with me, a best childhood friend and my wife's cousin. And I was trying to coax them out from behind the tree where my other, you know, relatives and friends could, could get a look. And I got growled at, okay, which, 
which surprised me. And I, I, I came closer and tried to encourage the subject out. And I got a, a pretty intense growl. And I just said, okay, big boy, I understand we're leaving. Of course, my best buddy had already hit me. He was running up. He was gone. He, he left the two ladies standing there, and I, I got back up on the trail. Uh, I learned later that we were within a mile of an area where I, I won't mention any name, any group that took a shot at one to harvest what they call a specimen, you know, for science. Mm -hmm. uh, I kind of, I don't buy that story. I think fame and fortune is the real motivator there to be the first I think it's ego driven. That's my opinion. And I have a right to it and, yeah. and I won't change. They claim it's all for science, you know, and everything. My, having come from law enforcement, I know some things about that shooting uh, that had things turned out differently. Innocent people, and I'm not talking about the, the big guys, innocent people could have been injured and there could have been people spending prison time for that, yeah. what I call stupid mm -hmm. uh, action. Okay. Um, if they'd have killed one there, could this have been a family member and could it have retaliated against my family, my friends or myself for what action somebody else did? And I'll say this, if somebody is taking, thinking on taking one of these subjects out, they need uh, to they need to consider the collateral damage mm. that they they might cause. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. You know, the, the, you you see one, there's three or four you don't see. Exactly, exactly. Number one, they may not get out of their life, but right. if they if they did, it's just like the the native people were were promised certain lands and the government would make agreements with them. And I'm not going to, you know, beat, beat a drum, but I'm making a point here is that they did what they were told to do. And then settlers that didn't abide by the government regulations would come in, steal, injure, or even kill. And when the native people retaliated, guess who got the, you know, short end of the stick was the native people, but they would go out and, in native customs, you know, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, there were a lot of innocent settler families that were injured and killed because of the actions of other, you know, settlers. You know, it was collateral damage. And I think it's the same way with these big guys that I consider very tribal is that if, if somebody does kill one, some innocent landowner somewhere may pay the price. Yeah. You know? So that's that's my two cents coming from a law enforcement background. Uh, I I feel that uh, it'd be close to murder to kill one. But again, that's my personal opinion. I have a right to. Well, I think a lot can, of people feel the same, you know. I know. Absolutely. Well, um, absolutely. I will yeah. just let me just go back because I will. I didn't actually mean. I, I know what you're saying, Dave Frey. But, you know, he does talk at Bigfoot conferences and, you know, the whole community always alludes to 411 when we're talking about Bigfoot. So my opinion is that it kind of pushes it in that direction and in other directions, you know, in the paranormal, it, you know, like you say, it's a mystery. So that's all I meant by that. But you're right. No, no, I, I, no, I totally understand. Again, yeah, I... I I'm just I, talking to someone in the chat. Sorry. I'm just talking to a, a comment that was made in the chat, Rick. It oh, okay. I'm, I'm, I thought. <laughs> I just I you. All right. All right. Yeah, I got you. It's all right. Don't worry. No, the, the bottom line is this people are coming. I know David very well. Him and I have talked on numerous occasions. Mm -hmm. Something people just don't go out and disappear. Okay. Uh, I was hit. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a. A back that people talk about being zapped, yeah. and uh, I have a friend in central Texas that has a big problem with hogs. Okay, uh, went down there to hunt with him, he's got a good side by side uh, ATV. Uh, we had scouted out areas, uh, it's about a two and a half hour drive for me to get there, and 
uh, right before dark, he hit a big Texas thorn that, that flattened the right front tire of his uh, side-by-side ATV. Uh, we got pulled into his barn. Uh, he went through everything, looking for a spare, looking for a patch kit, yada, yada, yada. Better part of an hour, he looked at me, said, Rick, I can't find anything, you know, and all the places are closed in the small town he lived by. And he said, look, you're either going to have to come back some other time or hunt by yourself. And I made the foolish decision of, of, of going out there, uh, nowhere to run hide or climb, I, you know, no ATV with me. And I don't know if you know, big boar hog can be very aggressive. Yeah. It, it was, it was not a real prudent, uh, idea on my part. I, I was, uh, I was confident I had my series 80, 45 cocked and locked. I had a couple extra magazines. I had an LR 308. I don't like the 30 round clips. They speak our magazines. They stick out too far, but I had three or four thir- uh, 20 round, you know, and I had it on a ready sling uh, mounted with a night vision sight, you know, uh, and I had my FLIR. And my plan was to, you know, go out there and locate the hogs and then, you know, bring the rifle to bear and identify the target and and cut loose, you know, take me out. Well, those boars can circle around behind you. And if you don't see one and they slice your Achilles tendon, you're pretty much toast. <laughs> and it wasn't a real prudent, you know, choice on my part, but I stayed out in the clear meadow areas and uh, I got close to a grove of trees back there, and I, I was hearing movement. To this day, I don't know what was in the tree, okay, our tree line, but it was definite movement, and I probably got within about 30 yards trying to locate what I was hearing with the flare. If I was able to see it, then I was going to bring up the, the rifle scope, identify my target positively. I don't indiscriminately shoot into stuff. I don't care what it is. Plus, he had cattle and livestock, and I really don't think he would want me to <laughs> shoot, shoot a bull or something. I don't think that would be good for our friendship. But this happened I, I to this day. There wasn't a spider web, snake, electric fence. Uh, when I was in police academy years ago, we had to take hits off the taser. We had to know what they felt like, what they did. Uh, it wasn't at the top of my list of things to do, but I'd been tased, you know, in training. Hadn't been tased out of you know, anywhere else, but yeah. uh, it felt exactly like a police taser hit my free left hand. I felt the jolt, I felt the shock in my nerve bundles and my uh, my arm seizing up. And and I basically did a a kind of a back step and a spin and simultaneously clicked on a bright cap light thinking I just got bit by a snake. There was nothing there on the grass. There was nothing moving out. There wasn't a spider web, but my left hand was useless for about the better part of a minute. And then when I finally realized there was nothing there to, to that bit me, my I started getting feeling back in my hand. And if you ever taken a taser hit, the best way I can describe it is your arm. Well, my arm seized, but then it, it's like it, it's gone to sleep. If like if you ever sit on a, your leg, you know, and it went to sleep and then you get up to take a walk, you know, and then it collapses. It's not responding. Very similar to that. And. Um. I started getting motion back into my hand and then my attention went back to the tree line and whatever was in there was gone. Okay. People have, have gave me one of two answers. Number one, it was a big guy and me creeping up there with a 45 on my hip and an LR 308, you know, dangling on off my chest on a ready sling. I probably didn't look too user friendly, you know? Yeah. It could have been just a warning because if it had been focused to my whole body, Daniela, I'd have went to the ground and I'd have been out. I mean, I'd have been helpless. Even with my weapons, I wouldn't have been able, my body wouldn't have responded. It was very focused to my left arm and my left arm only. 
hit hit on my hand and went up to my shoulder. Um, or there were hog in there, and one of the big guys knew I didn't need to stir him up because bad stuff was fixing to happen. You know, I mean, I could have had a whole herd of hog. Either way, it was a it was a benevolent brush back. That, and and I did when when I realized the activity was gone, I, I lifted up my hand. I said, "Okay, big boy, I can take a hint. My hunting was over. <laughs> I left." <laughs> yeah, they mounted. Yeah, I, to this day, uh, I know I was hit with a pulse of energy that took out my left left arm. Could it have been my whole body? Absolutely. You know, it was very focused. It was like somebody came up and tased my left hand my free hanging left hand. So I mean, when, when you are tased, I mean, it, does it affect your whole body? It depends on where, where, where the, uh, the taser goes. I mean, uh, you can do it like the thigh, the outer thigh and take out what it basically does is the shock sends a scrambling signal to your nerve bundles. It, your nerves, your nerves operate on a certain frequency. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the frequency of this shock purposely scrambles your nerve bundles so that your, your actions and, and stuff don't get to the muscle. It, 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 you lose muscle control. Actually, uh, there's areas you need to watch out for. It's not supposed to affect your cardiac, you know, mm -hmm. uh, muscles and stuff, but, some people are more sensitive. There's areas you don't tase people and for that reason. And yeah. uh, so uh, it, it, it just basically, and it's not, you know, prolonged, it's short lived, but uh, you know, you tase, you tase them, yeah. take them down or, or incapacitate so you can cuff and, and control them, you know, mm. beats, beats struggling and fighting with somebody. <laughs> oh gosh, I'm having to run up. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's a young man's it's a young man's uh, uh, profession. I don't I don't miss all that, you know. So uh, are you still going no. in the woods though? Are you still hunting? I still I, I no I don't do too much hunting anymore. Uh, I go into the woods to to see what the big guys are doing. Uh, I do uh, usually carry a large bore handgun. Uh, that you'll never see, you know, you'll never know I'm armed. And that comes from a lot of plain clothes stuff. I'd rather have one. Nobody know it, but if I ever need it, it's there. Mm -hmm. um, about five, six years ago, I was out doing some casual squatching. It was a great fall uh, morning and I'm back in on public land, not private. I got jumped by three feral pit bulls running loose. Oh, wow. And fortunately a double tap right in front of them turned them away. I could have easily dropped two, possibly three of them, but I'm a dog lover. And when they, they spun around, they got within about 20 feet at a full run and wasn't expecting the boom, boom, you know, mm. double tapped into a log right in front of them. They, they turned and ran, uh, old, Willie Nelson looking outfit come up from the river bottom. I think he was a grower uh, illegally growing. And these were his, I say feral pit bulls. They were hit probably his watchdogs, but had they have gotten to me and, and mauled me probably killed me. I could see fending off one pit bull with maybe a, a stick or, a, you know, a club, but not three. No, you know, they, no. they would have, they would have taken me, taken me down and it had been over with. I doubt the man would have ever, uh, reported that, you know, so expect the unexpected out there. Again, I go back, there's, there's things out there besides that I've, I've documented stuff and I'll, I'll share it with you. I don't want to get into that subject, but it, it may all tie in with 411. And, uh, I don't, could a rogue big guy be responsible? Absolutely. Some native, uh, uh, history talks about, uh, younger ones stealing squaws, you know, uh, yep. Indian squaws for, you know, sexual purposes. You right. Know? So, uh, I've got a, a video of one in central Texas. We're in a park and 
in the video, he's not looking at me. He's looking off to my left. And I was on a low water bridge with, with uh, three other uh, investigators, two of them with the BFRO. And uh, <laughs> right in the middle of us looking, we hear a thump, 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 you know, on this low water bridge, scared the daylights out of us. We thought we were being charged. And it was a probably in her late, mid to late 20s uh, jogger uh, who worked out in the gym. And uh, she, she, even, she was wearing a skin tight spandex jogging suit. And I'm happily married, but she did get a second look. Even though I'm, even though I'm looking at the Bigfoot, when she got, you know, bias, I did take a, a second look. Had to, you know, she would, she looked that good. But that young subject that I was videoing was watching that lady jog on that trail. Okay, right. now he was tactically in a perfect point to watch the trail. He wasn't paying us any mind. He was following that lady jogger. I don't know what the young guy's intentions might have been, but he was a looker, you know, mm -hmm. and I could only imagine him coming out of the, the brush unexpectedly. That poor woman, what, I mean, don't know, you know. Just makes and, you think, doesn't it? So, you know, what, what happened if someone uh, saw one of these things and had a heart attack and died? Yeah, from shock. I could see that happening. You know, and then the body just gets—I don't know—you know, taken by them or something else. Well, you know, the older ones, from what I understand, sometimes they get kind of banned because they're a—they're uh, a detriment to the family group. You know, they—they—they're not a benefit. And at some point, even in animals, uh, you know, where where one individual can't provide or fend for themselves, they're abandoned. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, there's so much energy, effort, and food. Uh, I wouldn't doubt if you've got a starving older Bigfoot out in the woods and some slow hairless <laughs> individual comes by, you know, and they're facing starvation, uh, they very well, I mean, even humans have, you know, look at the Donner Party, you know, in on the West Coast that got snowed in. They they turned to cannibalism in des desperation, but I don't see these, these subjects being any different either. You know, if you had an old, uh, feeble, older Bigfoot, they they may they may take a person for food. I, I, I don't have evidence of it, but I know it's a possibility, you yes. know. Definitely, so, isn't it? I mean, we well, just don't know. Like you say, if there's a rogue one, or you, you know. Well, from what I what I've been told and, and observed somewhat is that family groups won't tolerate a troublemaker. They'll either ban them, you know, out of their area, or they'll kill them. They'll police themselves. So in these, these more remote areas, you may have some of these rogues that are not around a family group. You know, family group don't want them there. And that, that may be where some of these people, these clusters of people are missing is, is a banished area. I mean, you go into any of your major cities, there's areas you don't want to go into at night. You know, and I'm talking about humans now. You know, you're going to get hurt or you might, not, you know, it might not come out of there alive, you know, yeah. and it could very well be the same way with, with these big guys. There's, there's areas that you don't want them. You don't want to see them. You know, you don't want to well, be, around say, them. it's not just Bigfoot out there, is there? It's no, just, no, there's some, them. there's some other things I, I don't, I don't understand. And I'm not trying to get into a big woo factor and stuff, but there's, there's stuff out there I'm not real comfortable with. And I don't know what it is, and I may never. But uh, you know, it is how, what it is. How does how does your Bigfoot look? He looks pretty good. That, that's a pretty good. Yeah. Is that him? <laughs> he looks he looks like he's a little little you know uh, disbelieving. He's looking at me there, but yeah. You know. <laughs> he looks if he had a yeah. That that's good, Larry. Very good. The 
the head, the hair, uh, the eyes. Yeah, very much, very much, you know. Okay, head. we're going to tweak him. He's going to tweak him. All right. And then I'll, I'll put it back up. You know, if just wide shoulders, you know, very powerful wide shoulders, if you want to put them in there. Uh, very, very pronounced, you know, tri, tricep, bicep, you know, and, and yeah. de developed chest. He, he was a, he was a stud, you know, as far as the, the, the body, very, very big, you know, broad show. Well, like, like the one person said that I've stolen a million times, they uh, share the forest during the day, they own it at night. <laughs> Uh, Strangeland asks, says, Rick, uh, have you come across any TP structures that have been changed in look, height, weight, and number of sticks, etc., uh, changed over time? I've come across uh, in my air. Matter of fact, I was, I was, my first sighting was 2010 in this area. Uh, it's posted core of engineer land in some of the area. There's another side that, I guess the fence blew down years ago and that was my defense. If we ever got caught in there is that, Hey, we walked in, you know, if you, if, if you want it secure, it's gotta be secure, you know, and we would, we would walk in and we wouldn't pass a fence line or anything. I did find remains of a little bit of fence there, but it was kind of buried and, you know, gone. But, uh, I, I lost my train of thought. What is it? Oh, we were in there in 2018. I don't think I have any of that that I could send you. It's the uh, the it's a perfect asterisk asterisk uh, shape uh, pulled up trees pulled up by the root balls and two of them are crossed and one of them. I mean it's it's perfect shape. Uh, it was in an area not likely traveled, so it's a significant marking that I have no idea what it is, you know? I mean, why it was put there. These trees were pulled up and carried there from them. So effort was involved in there. Uh, is it a place of birth? Could be, you know? Mm. Uh, some people think of uh, uh, possibly graves that, that, you know, we mark our graves. That could be a grave marker. I don't know, you know, but you find them all over, you know, the art structures and stuff. Yeah. Uh, I think I think that you know the ones where you see you know the trees have actually been pulled up. If that's like just something that they do as a habit, the whole you know place would be full of upturned trees. You'd think, wouldn't you? So yeah, it seems yeah. like it's only for an occasion, or it's not like then you know, they naturally well, just like like elephants will just you know rip a tree apart, won't they? For in an in an area where there were young ones, we found the the little uh, uh, kind of a brush arbor uh, area. Um, it was brought out that that the arch structures actually pointed towards the creek, and and one of our uh, suppositions, if not proven, is that these are pointer indicators for the for the young so that if the young need to get to water or from point a to point b it's a guide for the younger bigfoot when they're out so they don't get lost they it's a directional finder uh, i right. don't know but uh, uh also found areas where they uh uh would make uh it look almost looked like an igloo you know pulled over brush put on it if it was in an area where it snowed snow would accumulate out and actually just make a mound but they've got a crawl space in there and they'll take vegetation back when it's in the warmer summer uh they'll they'll mix it up with uh defecation and urination and uh churn it up in there and make a compost pile uh in the dirt there it's stinky but they get the compost pile going in the summer when the cold winter gets there, they bring in uh, tree branches and pine, but you know, bows, and they they make them a little bed and they sleep on that. It breaks the wind, uh, keeps the snow off of them, you know, the, right. the interlacing, and they've got their little uh, compost 
going beneath them. So they've actually sleeping on a, an electric blanket, if you will. Yeah. You know? But I'm sure they get pretty stinky doing it, but it beats getting cold and chilly. To me, that's innovation. You know, that's yeah. intellect. That's cognitive thinking. So definitely. Yeah. I don't, know, I don't know how I feel about the, you know, the signs for water uh, or, you know, I think any animal can find water. Um, so, so why would the Bigfoots need an arrow, say, you know, you know? Well, I was with, in Georgia, there was, there was uh, a lady showed me, you know, that there was, uh, well, well, yeah, again, it was water or, or certain, certain pathway for some reason. Don't know. I mean, again, they pull, they pull the trees over and they pin them. There's an arch structure there, so... Maybe the wow. maybe the water, the stream is like a you know a road, a yeah. corridor. Maybe maybe it's more for that. I mean, yeah. it could be absolutely anything, couldn't it? That's the thing. It's such a mystery. Well, they're they're so well, complex that we're not smart enough to get what they're trying to say. No. Yep. They're they're, I mean, they're, they're they know. Yeah. 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 When you get out of your car or truck in your their area, they know it. They well, I always, ways away. I always talk to them. I say, look, I'm just here visiting. You know, I'm not here to, to you know, do anything other than just hang out and see. <laughs> I was in Kentucky with a, with a newbie uh, first night. I don't know how they knew where I was sleeping. The, the guy's wife didn't come with him. He said, look, don't, don't sleep in your camper shell. He said, I've got a, this 32 foot trailer. He said, a sofa sleeper in the living area. Well, I didn't pull a sofa sleeper out, but I threw my sleeping bag and pillow on, on the sofa, you know, configuration three o'clock in the morning. I wake up and I think, man, what woke me up? You know, I mean, it was silent, man. It was sleep, good sleeping, you know? And I started to lay back down and that's when I heard the tap, tap, tap. It wasn't a bang. It was just a like, knuckles on the side of the wall right where my head was on the sofa how they knew where i you know to tap so i said look i'm tired would you please let me sleep nothing i mean i went to sleep slept like a baby next morning i told the trailer owner i said hey uh did you hear me talking last night he said no man he said i i i was you know out you know sleeping deep i said they're coming up to your trailer at night here in the camp well I get the incredulous look, you know, and he's being polite, but you can see, yeah, it's a little, that's a little hard. So that day with the group, we, we, we made up, we cooked about 40 or 50 hamburger patties, big potluck. That was our, you know, contribution, you know, as hamburgers and three or four patties fell through the grate. Well, they weren't picked out. You just left them in the coals. So that night after squatching, uh, it was a great camp. His trailer shower was okay, but they had great shower rooms right across the street there. It was like about a half dozen. You got your own room. You got your bench, your toilet, your sink, your shower. It's all tile, very convenient. You lock the door. Don't have to, you know, you don't have to worry. That's your shower room. So he said, hey, I'm going to go across the, the street there and, and grab a shower because it's kind of hot and humid, you know, and I'm I'm on my computer sitting on the sofa, typing away and downloading some videos and audios. And he goes out the door. I hear him go. I feel him going down the steps. That last step, the trailer rocks. The door yanks open and he jumps back inside. His eyes are wide. And he said, man, something big just ran away out there. I never looked up at him. I'm just still looking on my computer. And I waited about five seconds and I looked up at him and I said, I told you so what it was. He came out the door and it was a big guy right 10 feet out where the, the built in grate for the camp was down picking the pieces of the, the hamburger patties out. And when he opened the door, that, that guy jumps up and takes off. And of course he sees the big movement right in front of him. And he turns around and jumps back in. Wow. I, that, I love those kind of stories. Yeah. You know, they're funny. Yeah. You know, and the yeah. people next door in the camp said, yeah, I heard somebody running through there is wondering why you guys were. And we next day we tracked it, 
got some knuckle prints and slides and stuff. Yeah, we oh, followed yeah. his movement. He was moving out of there at a high rate of speed. But anyway. Well, we're, but, we're definitely going to get you back. So all right. We've got so, so much to share. <laughs> I really appreciate all the stuff you shared with us tonight. I, I, really I love, Danielle, I love yeah. sharing this I know. stuff. I know uh, we do. They, well, look, uh, let's, have a look. let's have a look at Larry's drawing tonight that is done for you. Yeah. Yeah. There you yeah. Go. Yep. He was he was the closest he was the closest to me. Very human like but but massive, you know. And yeah. uh, that area they they have they have their, their they raise their young. And uh it's very guarded. If you got in there, there there are people, there are neighbors that would probably shoot you if if they knew you didn't belong in there, mm. you know. So it's not not a place that would likely have a lot of people passing through. But these family groups are there at certain times of the the season, and uh, it's 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 a neat 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 thing. People don't realize it, but there there are a lot of landowners that interact with these subjects and. Uh, there's mutual uh, respect. Sometimes they get real rude and obnoxious. They're, they're, they can almost get vulgar, but I don't know if I'd want a whole family group living by me. I kind of like the, you know, I live in a subdivision, but again, I had, I had something, I'll just say this, something long hair went, went streaking by me one night after I finished watering the, uh, uh, trees, new line of trees I planted. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll I'll send you that video or picture. Yeah, Motri Game Cam caught it. So right. Okay. Thanks, folks. Man, I, I, oh, I probably I probably talk too much. <laughs> no, no, not all. Uh, it's been well. Well, even if you do, it's been absolutely fascinating listening to your accounts and your research and the stuff that you're doing. And I do want to get into it more. Okay. Uh, we get you back on the researchers report. Um, I'll, I'll arrange a date with you if, if you certainly, certainly, Dan. We'll keep in touch. I enjoyed it. But, yeah, thank you, thank you, Larry, for your uh, your work and uh, you know, God bless you, sir. You know, that hair is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I say every time the hair is fantastic. <laughs> well, that is amazing, Larry. Yeah, it is. Yeah, well, it is. You. Yep. Just so we did what we drew, what you saw. That's all I care about. Well, it just, it, it I'll, I'll, uh, uh, one picture that these ladies took up there, uh, at, uh, I'll, I'll, it's, it's, and she said it's okay to share. I got the permission. I'll send you that one, Danielle. It, it, it's that. pretty, it's pretty good. Yeah. And I'll, I'll send you when I was going in. And, and you'll understand the picture when I was going in there and all these movement, I had a little RCA small wonder. And in my nervous fidgeting, I was taking pictures and I've got one peeking out over my shoulder. It's oh. not telephoto. I'll send you that one too, but yeah. I gotta, I gotta go home to do that. It's in the moonlight. Uh, I'll shoot, I'll send you the, the picture and then an enhancement of, of, Show, he's within reaching distance. I mean, he is close. So, anyway, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll get it to you when I get back home. So. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Once again, yeah, thank you. All right. Really well, folks. It. Larry, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks for, for your uh, amazing skills. Uh, yes. Thanks to everybody in the chat. Uh, sorry if I missed any questions, but um, I appreciate you all being there and for hitting the like button. Uh, the thumbs up button, whatever you want to call it. Um, did we make it over 200? We did. We did. That's did it. they know about the, my animal family? Oh, no. Um, well, um, I haven't got it here, but you're, you are doing an animal family. Um, I can't find it, Larry. Let me. Just I gotta go, folks. Have a oh, good yeah. evening, Rick, and take go care. Go. All right, thank you very much. Great. You're Bye. welcome. All right, take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Um, no, I just you know. We'll we'll put it up next week. Okay. We'll put it up. We'll have it arranged and everything. 
Um, but we are well over our two hours, nearly two and a half hours. It's been a long night, but it's been a good night. Um, we'll leave with the image that Larry, uh, Larry drew tonight. Um, thanks again to everyone. I'll see you tomorrow night here for Wednesday Encounters. Uh, until then, everyone, take care and good night.